Right, here's a tutorial for tic-tac-toe in Python and I'm going to start by copying the requirements over into a new project in REPL so we're in REPLit. Let's uh, start a new thing here. Python tic-tac-toe. Alright. I'm going to close the sidebar and let's just paste in what I copied. Um, if you want a quick way to turn everything into a comment. I think you can just do command slash. Yep, there we go. And it automatically puts these little hashtags or these number signs in front. That's a, the way to do a comment in Python. Okay, so what do we need? The reason I copied it over here is it can kind of function as pseudocode. It's showing me basically everything I need to program. Um, so let's just start doing all of this step by step. And if it takes us multiple videos, that's fine. Um, so let's just do this first part. It says the program should display the state of the grid each time it is someone's turn. Okay, well each time it is someone's turn, if we read a few more of these steps, the program should keep track of whose turn it is. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you've done tic-tac-toe before. There's two players that take turns. Um, the next one says the program should ask the current player to enter a row number and then ask them to enter a column number. Um, if the location given is out of bounds or is already taken, the computer should ask the user to try again until they enter valid input. Okay. Um, trying to decide how I want to do things. Should we prioritize functionality or should we make it actually look nice like a tic-tac-toe grid? Because that can sometimes take a long time to focus on the graphics and the visual aspect of something. So let's just focus on functionality first and maybe we can make it look nice later because this will be easy. Um, so let's do that first step. We can uh, display the grid each time it's somebody's turn. Well first we need to have a data structure that keeps track of the grid, right? Um, and an easy way to store all of the different cells, different rows and columns information is to have a list of three lists. So I'm going to say grid equals, and then a list of a list, a list, and a list. <laughs> and let's start out with it just with blank values in between each, or as each of the cell value. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple times. Okay. So there's nothing in the grid at the beginning of the game, as it's supposed to be. Um, let's start a loop. Now, a really easy way to just make the game go on forever is to just say while true. And then we can, somewhere in the game, or inside of the loop, we can have it break out or return if somebody ever wins, right? Um, but this while loop is just going to keep letting somebody take a turn. Um, we got to keep track of whose turn it is. So that's pretty easy. We can just say um, turn equals um, however we want to do this. X's and O's make sense, right? So let's just start with X first. Um, and then we can say print turn. It is your turn. Pick a column. and we, Or maybe a row first. Let's say pick a row and then give them options one, two, and three. Okay. Um, and then we want to receive their input. So let's say um, row choice equals input. And we need it to be treated as an integer value, a whole number. So I'm just going to say int surrounding that. Okay. Let's test it already. Let's see if this asks us for a row. It says, X, it is your turn. Pick a row. One, two, or three. So I could enter two. And then it goes again. And I haven't got it changing whose turn it is yet, so that's fine. It still says, X, it is your turn. Pick a row. Um, I just wanted to see if that would display things correctly. Let's also make it display the state of the grid, right? That's what's supposed to happen. Let's say print grid. Well, since we're prioritizing functionality first, it's not going to look very nice. It's just going to be <laughs> that. So it, 
we got to make it a little bit more readable, right? We got to have each of these rows be on separate lines. So maybe let's have a print function, print grid. And then let's write that function real quick up here. Maybe we could just say uh, def print grid. And that's just going to print the first row. So grid at spot zero. And then another statement, print grid at spot one. And then another statement, print grid at spot two. OK, that should look a little bit better. Let's rerun that. So I run it again. There we go. So now we're getting something that's a little bit more readable. And we can do better. Maybe later on in the project we'll make it so it actually has like little dashes or lines in between each row and column. But um, for now, that'll do just fine.